Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a fun video in store for you guys today. Last month I posted a drugstore starter kit video that you guys really seem to love and I got some requests to do a high-end version of that video. So I am going to do that for you guys today. I've gone through all of my high-end makeup and picked out some of my favorite things that feel a couple of different check boxes. They're not just some of my favorite high-end products, but also they have good packaging, good value or bang for your buck, which is particularly important to me when it comes to high-end makeup. Some of them I feel like are kind of multi purpose and I actually have a couple of options in a few of these categories because I know we might not all be looking for the same thing but overall these would be my top recommendations for anyone that's looking to maybe purchase makeup for the first time and wondering where to start these are all really solid products that I think would work for a lot of different people or different preferences so we will get into it but before we do a special welcome to any of you that are new here happy to have you here at my channel I hope that you enjoy this video today if you do I would love for you to subscribe to my channel before you leave also if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video please make sure that notification bell is turned on. And with that said, we've got a lot of fancy makeup to talk about today, so let's get right into it. All right, so before we jump in, just a quick note, I am wearing all of this makeup on my face today. So this is my high-end starter kit in action. But let's just get right into it. So I decided to skip a primer. There are a few high-end primers that I really enjoy, but if I'm just starting out in makeup and buying makeup for the first time, especially high-end makeup, which is, it, let's be honest, this is gonna get pretty pricey pretty fast. As much as I enjoy primers, I don't think they're absolutely necessary, especially if you have dry skin. You can always just use an extra layer of moisturizer before you go in with your foundation. So let's start with the foundation that I've selected. And that would have to be this right here. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. Now this is a $40 foundation, but it actually has pretty good value. $40 I think is pretty standard when it comes to a higher end foundation. In fact, I have a few high end foundations that were more than $40 and this foundation includes 1.6 ounces, which is quite a bit more than the standard amount. Standard foundations typically include about one ounce, which is a big deal to me. That puts this more around the like less than $30 mark. My math could be slightly wrong on that. I think this would be $26 per ounce. My kids are all at school today. They're the ones that are good at math, not me. Anyways, this is a great foundation. There's a pretty good shade range in this one. In fact, I think it's pretty great. Let's see how many shades are in here. There are 40 shades available on the Sephora website. It's a really nice squeezy tube. I love the packaging of this. I wish all foundations came in this type of packaging. As much as I like a pump, I've discovered that a lot of pumps are just less than perfect, which I talked about in a recent video, but I just really love the easy packaging of this. I love that it's kind of plastic, so it's very nice and travel friendly but as simple and functional as the packaging is, it's still really pretty. It's Dior, so it makes me feel a little fancy, but for the price, again, you get great bang for your buck. I also feel like this is a foundation that would probably work for a variety of different skin tones. It's not necessarily dewy, but it's also not matte. It's a good skin-like finish. I don't find it to be drying on my skin at all. It gives very standard medium coverage, which that's the coverage level that I prefer. I like just a good, solid, well-performing medium coverage, then I can get a little bit more coverage from my concealer if I need it. This does exactly that. It wears really well on me. I don't know that I would say this is like transfer proof. I've heard some people say this is supposed to be kind of transfer resistant. It does say it's waterproof and sweat resistant. I haven't tested out those claims, but I do think it wears really well on my skin and wears for a good solid 10 hour day. I have the shade 2N. I actually kind of think the shade is a little too peach for me. I kind of want to go back and get the warmer, kind of more olivey or yellowy shade. I think it's 2W. I think that'll probably be a better shade match for me, but I can still get this to work. Great foundation. So happy I tried this one. I tried this based on some of your recommendation. I kind of held off on this one for a while, so it took me a little longer to jump in and try this one. I'm so glad I did though. And because of its great packaging, its value, its shade range, its coverage and finish, that's why I would recommend this in my high-end starter kit. Next up is a concealer. This one was tricky because I went back and forth between two concealers that I particularly love in my high-end concealer collection. I ended up going with the Dior Forever Skin Concealer. I almost went with my Kosas Concealer. That's my favorite concealer, especially for my under eye area, but this I think is a better general purpose concealer, like for all areas of my face. This one does have a little bit higher coverage than the Kosas Concealer, and I'm finding as I get a little bit older, as some of my hyperpigmentation marks or acne scarring gets a little bit worse, I find that I need a little bit more coverage. I still think this is a great concealer for the under eye area. You just have to be a little careful with how much you apply under your eyes. So because this one is a little bit higher coverage, I will use just the tiniest dot on my under eye and then I'll just take my sponge and just very lightly kind of blend it in right to this area right here. I try not to swipe this all the way under my eyes, which I generally try not to do that with any concealer because I do have a lot of fine lines under there. I only apply concealer exactly where I need it, but this is a really great one. If you use this on areas that are a little bit stubborn, 
maybe acne scarring or hyperpigmentation, what I really like to do is I will tap this on an area and then kind of let it almost dry or sort of start to set before I blend it in. It will give you the most insane coverage ever if you try that. It's just a really great concealer. And on top of all those things, one of the things I love the very most about this, and I have said this before, is its value. Just like with the Dior Backstage, this has really good value. You get a lot of product in this bottle. Let me just show you guys a little size comparison here. So here's the Kosas concealer. This one has 0.2 ounces for $28. This one has 0.33 ounces for $36. So I think the value is a little bit better. Again, the coverage is a little bit better. So unless you have extremely dry skin and you don't need as high of coverage this is the one that i would most recommend i absolutely love it i think it's fantastic I've had mine for over a year now and it is still going strong and every time i pull it back out including for my makeup today i'm reminded of why i love that concealer so much it covers everything moving right along let's move into some face products the next one is my bronzer this one was tricky there were a couple that were in the running for me including my milk bronzer my hourglass bronzer but the one that i ended up picking is the fenty beauty cheeks out cream bronzer the shade I have is but a biscuit. I rave about this bronzer and this particular shade all the time The more I use it the more I fall in love with it as much as I love my milk bronzer And that one I think the value is going to be a little bit better and that one you get a ton of bronzer in there I mean probably more than you would ever need in your lifetime, but the shade of this one is just so fantastic I do like the shade of this one a little bit better. It's not quite as warm as the milk one but it's also not ashy. It's the most perfect shade of bronzer that I think I have ever tried. I love a cream bronzer. I generally prefer it, especially as I get older. I just find that it gives my skin just a little bit of added hydration. It makes it look a little bit more plump. They wear really well on my dry skin. This one is really nice and creamy and blends out easily. I can apply this with a finger, with a sponge, but my preferred method is with a brush. It is such a good one. It comes in about eight shades, which is a pretty good shade range for a bronzer. And this is another one that was recommended to me by several of you guys. I am so happy that I tried it out. This thing was kind of love it first use for me it was it's so perfect in every way I absolutely love using this bronzer next on my list is a blush and this one is a little bit on the pricey side but I'm picking it because it gives me like two products for one I picked the Patrick Ta double take cream and powder blush combo this one I have is in the shade she's so la which I think is currently out of stock on the Sephora website I have been trying to pick up another shade of this for many many months I still haven't gotten around to it originally when he came out with this blush when I first tried tried this out there were only four shades I think there's an additional three or four shades now but no matter the shade you pick it seems to be very popular because this thing goes out of stock all the time on the Sephora website now this specific shade is very unique I absolutely love it it's kind of a cross between a blush and a bronzer it's more like blushy in tone it has a little bit of rosiness to it even though this doesn't look like it does when you put it on your cheeks it is a little bit more kind of rosy and warming then after you put the powder on your cheeks you can put the cream on top to add a little bit more color and kind of lock in that color and give it also kind of a dewy finish. I love the concept of this. It's a great formula, both the powder and the cream. But if you're not into these kind of bronzy, like rusted rose tones, then there's a lot of other shades to pick from. I just love the idea of having a powder and a cream blush in one. There are times I'll go into this just for the cream alone and times when I'll double them up because I do think it gives you better lasting power if you do that. But it is really lovely. I really need to get on top of it and order another shade while they have a couple of them in stock right now. I try not to order from Sephora on a regular basis. So I kind of wait till those sales roll around to order the things that are kind of on my wish list and most of the time these have been out of stock so one of these days I need to either go online and pick one up or just go into a store and try and find another shade because I really would like to pick up one or two more the packaging is absolutely stunning if you are one that can't stand some of those drugstore blushes that I mentioned because they're constantly breaking or their packaging's falling apart you will absolutely love this very luxe very fancy packaging but above all it's the product inside here that I think is absolutely amazing next up is a highlighter this one might surprise you guys I ended up going with the Nabla highlighter in the shade ozone as soon as I tried this out I was pretty impressed with it but the more I use this the more it impresses me it is such a great highlighter if you are someone that likes something very very intense these do come in plastic packaging but it's much more luxury than kind of what you would typically get from a drugstore. They're very pretty. The product is beautiful. I love the soft pink color and I love this highlighter. Look at that glow, you guys. It's absolutely blinding. For those of you that have more fair skin or like something a little bit more icy, this is a perfect shade. But maybe for those of you with more medium to deep skin that maybe like something a little bit deeper, a little bit more golden, this shade Amnesia is beautiful. This one I can get to work for me when I have a little bit of a tan, but it's a little bit darker than the ozone shade. Great highlighter. You can get these at Ulta for about $24 a piece. And I feel like they're kind of underrated, at least here on YouTube. I don't hear a lot of YouTubers talking about them. However, a lot of you guys did mention that this was one of your favorite highlighters of all time. And I would have to agree, which is why I picked it for my starter kit. All right, let's talk about brow products. Now, a couple of things initially. I'm not a brow 
expert when it comes to high-end brow products. There's a lot that I still haven't tried because generally speaking, I don't like to spend a lot of money on my brow products with a couple of exceptions. But there are a couple things I've discovered that I think are absolutely worth it and worth investing in or putting in your starter kit. First off is a good pencil. This one right here is the Precisely My Brow by Benefit. I actually don't even own the normal version that has the spoolie on it. This is just a travel friendly version that I got in a birthday kit. But I have to say you guys, I have been using this more recently, more regularly. And this is pretty impressive. It does remind me a little bit of the Ulta Beauty pencil, which generally speaking, that pencil is $5. This one, if you buy the actual full version, is over 20, which I think is a little bit pricey when there are some affordable options out there for so much cheaper that work just about as well. But there's a couple things I've noticed about this one more recently, the more that I have used it, is that this one, it's called the Precisely My Brow. And I do think that this pencil, because of its stiffness and formula, is a little bit more precise than even my Ulta Beauty one. That might shock you guys. I rave about that Ulta Beauty pencil all the time. It is still my holy grail. I will not abandon you, Ulta Beauty Ultra Slim Brow Pencil. But I have noticed that this one does give a little bit more precision. So if you don't mind spending money and you would like to try out a high-end brow pencil, I do think this is a really good one. And along with that, this one probably won't surprise you guys if you've been watching me for a while. I had to include the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. This was another recommendation from you guys along with some other things including their clear brow gel that I tried. I have issues with clear brow gels generally though, and kind of hear me out on this. A product like this or something a little bit more waxy and stiff works a little bit better for me because my eyebrow hairs are very temperamental. So they kind of grow in like a sideways and kind of downward direction. So when I put a clear brow gel in, because it's a little bit more wet, I can visibly see them falling down within like two or three seconds of the time I apply them. They don't like to stay upright unless I have something that's a little bit thicker. So something like this works a little bit better for me. If your brows are not quite that temperamental, if they will stay in place for more than five seconds, then maybe a clear brow gel would work a little bit better for you. I just find this to give my brows the best hold of just about anything that I have tried. I think it's a great product. They do have the e.l.f. version of this, the brow lift that's similar, but that one's not quite as stiff as this one. Big fan of this stuff. I actually like putting this in first. I'll just put it in with my fingers. I'll use a spoolie to kind of brush it upright, and then I'll go in with a pencil afterwards. Maybe brush them one final time to get them exactly where I want them, and they will stay placed all day. So I did my brows a couple of hours ago. Haven't even actually looked at them yet, but they look pretty amazing. Let's go into eyeshadow. You guys probably, you probably knew this was going to be kind of a hard one. I decided to pick something that I'm pretty confident that anybody would enjoy and that's not going to set you back a ton of money, at least with its initial sticker price. I went with the Natasha Denona mini nude palette. I think any of the mini palettes are fantastic from Natasha Denona. This one is the one that I'm wearing today and the one that I selected because I feel like neutrals and warm neutrals are the type of shades that look good on absolutely anybody, whether you have very fair skin and maybe blue eyes. These will make your blue eyes pop if you have deeper skin. Skin. Bronzes look amazing on deeper skin, in my opinion. And this gives you great range from light to dark. It gives you just two basic mattes, her standard formula, which I think is one of her easiest formulas to work with. Very pigmented, but very easy to blend. Her shimmers are fantastic. You get a perfect perfect champagne in here, which you might not think is a big deal. It's a huge deal to me. I love a really good, just like perfect champagne that's not too, not too icy, but it's still nice and bright. That's exactly what this one is. It's absolutely beautiful on the lid. It looks great with the other bronzes inside here. I love that this one gives you a warmer kind of coppery bronze. That's the one that I'm wearing today. This is the one that I usually prefer to reach for because it's such a beautiful, it's almost like a greeny kind of cooler toned bronze. It has like a warm undertone. It's really lovely as well. This is one of those palettes that you can get a gorgeous, glamorous, really beautiful bronzy eye look in a matter of seconds with. The packaging is really nice. It is plastic, but this is like luxe plastic packaging, unlike what you get from the drugstore. And at $25 a piece, that's not gonna set you back as much as many, many high-end palettes will. So I love these so much. I know you guys know that. I also love some of the other color versions they have. I think the retro is my favorite, but that one's maybe not quite as like universal as this color story is. I also like the mini Biba as well. But I do have an option B because I'm very indecisive and I really felt like this one needed another mention today as a possibility if you're not a Natasha Denona fan. Similar price point on this one is the Nabla Nude Cutie Palette. I really love this palette so very much. It is a more like nude palette, but you get a black in here if you really want to go dark and smoky or add some liner to your outer corner. And I love the formulas in this one. I think they are a little bit more advanced of formulas because they're not traditional powders, at least these three shades right here. They're kind of that like creamy to powder formula, which needs to be built up a little bit more. But if you, if you have the patience to build it up and kind of tap it on more than blend it on, 
I love the finished look that these give. They just, they're just something really unique and special about them. I also love the shimmers that are included inside here. It is a beautiful little palette. Every look I've ever done with this one, and I've done a lot of them, I reach for this palette a lot, has been flawless. I love this little palette. It's one of my very favorite of these little cutie palettes, which of themselves are some of my very favorites. So I wanted to give this one a little shout out today as well. Okay, let's talk about a liner. So liners, generally, you guys know how much I love my 98 cent Wet n Wild Simmer Brown Now liner. This one's a little bit more pricey, but I did want to put into my starter kit a black gel liner because I think it's a very multi-purpose product as in you can get a soft simple line you can do a winged line with it you can line your water line you can go in light you can go in heavy it's a very creative and functional product to use if you're into liners which I definitely am but it is a great gel liner and if you're looking for something that's really nice and inky and dark and you don't mind spending a little bit more I have really been enjoying the Natasha Dona work and set gel liner this is a little bit more inky and black than even some of my favorite drugstore versions obviously it's a lot more expensive so so the difference might not be worth the additional price for some of you, but I really, really like this one. It is the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today. It is so dark. And what I love about this one is as you kind of work with the liner, sometimes what I do with the gel liner, like I'll put it on and then I'll kind of like take my finger and kind of smudge it out to kind of clean up the edges. But sometimes when I do that with certain gel liners, as they're kind of shared out, they turn that kind of charcoaly grayish, almost like blue color. So they don't look as inky and black. This one doesn't do that. It maintains its very inky black rich color, which I really love. I'll be honest and tell you guys, I haven't tried out a lot of high-end gel liners. So I don't have a lot to compare this to, but I have tried a lot out from the drugstore. I've tried the Maybelline one, the L'Oreal one, the Wet n Wild one, the Elf one. I actually really like all of those and I would recommend any of them if you're more on a budget, but if you don't mind spending a little bit more and you want something that's maybe just a little bit more inky, this is a great option. Next up for my mascara recommendation, I decided to recommend the Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara. This is a slightly newer mascara to me that I've just really really come to love. I just love how this looks on my lashes. It gives my lashes this really soft, full, feathery, voluminous, and long look that I really, really love. It's also a really good mascara for your lower lashes, which is kind of a feat. A lot of mascaras that I love so much for my upper lashes don't work very well on my lower lashes. I don't know if I'm the only one that notices this, but a lot of times when I go to my lower lashes with a mascara, they get like really clumpy or they get too wild or long or they I'll get like one eyelash that kind of sticks straight out like it's hard to find a mascara that works really well on my lower lashes and this is one of the few that does another one that does which is actually from the drugstore is the sky high mascara by the way this is a mini I have I'm just finishing this up before I open up my full size this is also a mascara that kind of like is like a middle of the ground mascara. It gives me really good volume, really good length. It gives me definition. It gives me fullness, but it's also not too clumpy or too flaky on me. A lot of mascaras are more volumizing and full, like say, for example, the Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. I know a lot of people really love that mascara, but that one looks a little flaky and dry on my lashes and it it just looks a little too wild. It's not quite as defining as I like. This is like a good mixture between something a little more defining, like say the original Lash Sensational and something more full and voluminous like L'Oreal Lash Paradise. This is like right in the middle of those two. The only negative thing I would say about this one is it is not watery eye friendly at all. So if you have any plans to maybe be in a situation where you might be a little teary eyed or maybe where your eyes will be watering, this thing is going to run on you. Like as soon as my eyes get watery, it starts to like liquefy and I'll kind of get like the running. However, if I'm not in that situation, this wears really well on me. It doesn't flake. It doesn't smudge by the end of the day, unless of course my eyes are watery. So that's something to be aware of, but I've really been enjoying this mascara. I think it's absolutely beautiful on the lashes. It makes my lashes look like I have a lot of lashes, but they're not so like wild and dramatic and intense. They look kind of messy. I don't know if that makes sense. They look a little bit more neat, but they're still full. They're still nice and dark. They're still long. Basically all the different qualities of a good mascara in one other than water resistance. Onto the lips. And the first thing I want to mention is one of the things if I had to pick or like rank my high-end starter kit products from most valuable or most important to me to like things maybe I could like find an alternative for. This would be right up there at the top and it is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner. This one is in the shade Iconic Nude. I've been raving about this for a good long year or so. I have been starting to find some drugstore similarities or options to these because again, value wise, I mean, this is a tiny little lip pencil that I think is around 21 or $22, which is a lot of money, but you guys, this stuff is budge 
proof. It will last for many, 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 many hours on your lips. And as someone that is kind of a new, I don't want to say like a new convert because I've been using lip liners for a while. But when I first started my channel, I didn't really think about using a lip liner. And then as, as my channel's gone on and also as I've aged, I think a lip liner is one of the most important things that you can use, particularly if your lips are starting to age. There's something that a lip liner does that's really special for your lips that like helps bring them back to life as they slowly die. Was that a little too morbid? As they slowly start to disintegrate, to lose their life, their plumpness. These things are amazing. I have two of them. I have this shade, Iconic Nude, and the shade Pillow Talk. This is my favorite shade. I think of all my lip liners, not just formula, but color-wise, this thing is amazing because it goes with absolutely anything. It's basically the color of my lips, but a, like a full shade darker so it gives really good definition but the color I'd say is like a little bit pink a little bit beige a little bit I don't know if I'd say brown but it goes with any shade of nude lip that I'm in the mood for whether it be something more on the pink side or something a little bit more peach something a little bit lighter something more mid-tone or even just on its own filled in my lips with a little bit of gloss on top this thing is glorious I love this lip liner so much I rave about it all the time you guys are probably tired of me raving about the Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat liner every time I bring it up but I just have so many good things to say about it because it performs better than any lip product in my entire collection. There's a special occasion I want my lips to look their best for a long, long time. This is the number one product I think of. But I also had to throw in a lipstick because I do love my lipsticks. And this one was kind of tricky because there's some that I really love. I love my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. It's beautiful. If packaging is your thing, I would recommend the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. I only own one. I have the shade JK Magic, which I absolutely love. But they're insanely pricey. $37 is a lot of money to spend on a lipstick when I have others that I like for a lot cheaper. So the ones that I wanted to recommend, and I'm saying ones because I have a couple different shade options to share with you guys, but I'm talking about the MAC lipsticks. These are just classic. I'm a big fan of MAC lipsticks. I don't know that everyone is still, I mean, back in the day, these were, I mean, MAC was like the high-end makeup brand when there weren't a million other high-end makeup brands. But I still look at a MAC lipstick in particular and just, there's just something kind of like old school about it that I really love. And also they just perform really well. The packaging, although it's pretty simple, is still really nice. I find the lids to be nice and sturdy. These don't have problems in my purse for me. So the one that I am wearing today is the shade Blankety. So I have that darker lip liner on, then the shade Blankety on top and a gloss on top of that. But probably my two favorites, oh gosh, this is hard. Let's pick three favorites, shall we? So I have Blankety right here, which is the one I'm wearing. Let me give these a quick swatch for you guys. So here's Blankety. It is a lighter nude. I like this one with a when I'm wearing a darker lip liner underneath. Alone, this would be too light for me. But if I want something kind of similar in tone to that one that's a little bit deeper, this would be one I'd recommend. This is the shade Viva Glam 2. Similar shade, a little bit darker and a little bit more matte or a little bit less sheeny or creamy. So this one's Blankety is amplified. This one is a satin finish, Viva Glam 2. So there is Viva, Gl Viva Glam 2 right there, Blankety right there. And my last recommendation, this one is a little bit more peach in tone. I think this one is a matte. Yeah, this one's a matte. This is the shade Yosh, which I think is the cutest name for a lipstick. There it is right there. Another favorite of mine. I think those are fantastic nude lip colors. If you like your nudes a little bit on the lighter side. I love all three of those. I love the smell of the MAC lipsticks. That might be because it kind of has some like a sentimental. The smell of these reminds me of early YouTube, which I really, really love. The price on these is a little bit better as well. They're around $20. They kind of vary depending on, I think, the finish that you get. But, but I, typically, I think they're around $19 or $20. You can find them on Ulta's website. They have a ton of shade options, and I, I love them. I love MAC lipsticks. I think I always will. Last up is a lip gloss. This one probably won't surprise you guys. I had to go with my Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in the shade Sweet Mouth. This is such a great gloss. I mean, I have others that I've tried from the drugstore. I've even found a dupe for this one at the drugstore. I still think it's worth getting the high-end version because value-wise, it's going to be about the same price as the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Opal, which is a close dupe for this one. Here it is right here. Again, I am wearing this lip gloss on my lips today. I love the smell of these. They give you great value. You get 0.3 ounces of product inside here, which is a ton of gloss. This particular color, it doesn't have a lot of color and it has this like very very light pink with a shimmer kind of like icy almost blue shimmer reflect to it it looks good on top of anything whether I'm just doing a lip liner underneath or any lip color even if I'm doing something a little bit darker this is a fantastic gloss it goes with absolutely anything I love this one it comes with me all the time I am constantly having to dig this back out of my purse to the point where I've actually considered buying a second one of these so I can leave that one in my purse and have this one down here at my makeup 
area. Haven't gotten around to doing that quite yet because I feel like as someone that has a large makeup collection, I should probably just use what I have. But that's how much I love this gloss. I'm When I don't have it, I'm wishing that I had it all the time. And that's gonna do it, you guys. Those are all the products for my high-end makeup starter kit. Of course, I didn't include a setting spray. If, if I had to, I would say the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. But again, I don't use setting spray every single day. So we're kind of just going with the basics here. These products, I think, would be a great place to start if you're looking for a makeup collection that's gonna give you everything that you need, that's gonna perform really well, comes in good packaging, and generally gives you pretty good value for what you're paying. These are the products that I would most recommend. Did any of these surprise you guys? Were you surprised with some of my picks? What would some of your picks be? I would love to hear that from you guys down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it entertaining or helpful. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. I really hope that you guys are all doing well. Before I leave, let me give you one more reminder to subscribe if you haven't done that yet. But that's gonna be it for today. Thanks again, you guys. I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Plaster your brows to your face, which I know that sounds terrible. Then you brush them, and then they're not as plastered to your face, but they'll stay where they are. That was a terrible description. <laughs> I tried too hard to squeeze all the paint out of the roller. My husband was in there painting with me, and he's like, why are you pushing so hard? Just redip your roller. And then I watched a few YouTube videos of like professionals painting and realized, yeah, I'm doing it all wrong. <laughs>